All right, guys, I've been composting for a while, uh, but today I want to explore how to turn this into this. I got a load of wood chips from a uh, local arborist, and it was full of wood chips mixed with um, leaves. So I'm curious to see if these will heat up on their own and if I actually need to add anything. So I'm gonna build this up with just uh, compost, I'm sorry, just uh, wood chips and uh, whatever came in, like shredded wood chips and leaves together and see if that heats up. And if it doesn't, then I'll start adding coffee grounds after that. All right, I'm starting a new compost pile. Started with a bucket of wood chips at the bottom. I'm throwing in some leftover like paper and uh, unfinished compost on top of that. This video is not an introduction to composting, but just in case you don't have the basics, I'll explain some of it. How composting involves mixing high nitrogen containing matter or, or greens with lower nitrogen high carbon containing matter, also known as browns. Uh, wood chips are considered browns and items like coffee grounds, green leaves, or veggie scraps are greens. The compost pile needs plenty of moisture. The material should be damp but not soggy. The thermophilic or uh, heat loving bacteria need nitrogen to break down organic matter and enough nitrogen will allow the pile to get hot and decompose faster. In this series I want to test how much green input is required to hot compost wood chips and whether hot composting wood chips is a viable option. Um, I'd like to know if wood chips can compost on their own. I don't think they will but we'll see. And here I am building the pile with mostly wood chips and water. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, I'm going to call it a day. This uh, pile, it's not all the way to the top, but um, this is plenty big for it to heat up. So I honestly don't think it's going to heat up. That's why I don't want to finish filling it up because I'll have to move it all anyway. Um, so I'm just going to check. I'm going to give it about a week and see if there's any heat generated at all um, and see what that looks like. It's two days later. And the pile has not heated up to where I would have expected a compost pile to heat up by now. Normally, actually by the next day, I see a big swing in temperature. And by the second day, it's uh, well above the, you know, usually around 140 degrees or higher. So I would consider this a failure. Um, and I will be remixing this with some uh, nitrogen uh, containing compound, probably coffee grounds, and then whatever other kitchen scraps I have at the moment. My active compost pile. Let's see what it is at. It is climbing right now. It's been um, it's been going for almost two weeks, I think, week and a half or so. So it definitely needs to be turned. I haven't turned it. I uh, sprayed it with a little water, but. Um, I think it's slowed down. It was around 160 for the first four days, or I would say 155. And then it gradually started going down. I want to say right now it's probably right around 130. Comes up on top of it because I'm going to have to some So it's at about ambient temperature, about 100 degrees, which it's 100 degrees today. Actually, it hit 105 today in Sacramento, believe it or not. Even at this temperature, that my kale is still surviving. I'm still harvesting almost every day from this and uh, making smoothies for the kids. Here's my other layered compost. I'm about to turn this pile as well, actually. And uh, yeah, I just took the, this is one of those uh, geo bins or whatever they call them. It's like a basically an enclosure that makes approximately one cubic yard in dimensions one cubic yard cylinder and you can see this is how I layered it I mean there's mixes of greens and browns and all that and it's been hot this one's been going for at least two weeks and as you can see I I compost paper as well paper and cardboard I'll just throw them in um, I mean eventually it all breaks down so I move this pile over and I got it fluffed up a little more I didn't really add any much material maybe just um, probably like 20 pounds of coffee grounds and that's about it just to get it up and going again okay guys this is the secret ingredient coffee grounds 
So this is probably, I don't know, this is maybe like 50 pounds of coffee grounds. And we're gonna go ahead and use it to jumpstart this uh, pile of wood chips and let's see what kind of effect it has. Where? Over here! I oh, know. Are you sure? They didn't get out though. The mama is reading about Maggie. Maggie right now. I just pulled her out of the other one over. Looks like a very slight rise. It's creeping up to a hundred. <laughs> Still not what I would expect from a a very active compost pile but this one's just starting out also <clears throat> I'm assuming it, it could take a little bit of time for the thermophilic bacteria to colonize the whole pile I did mix in I sifted some of my other compost yesterday and I mixed some of the bigger bits of wood in with this one so it's definitely been inoculated but sometimes it could take a little bit longer so we'll see over the next few days whether or not the temperature goes up one thing I want to know is that I don't think I don't think having a wood chip pile like this is optimal. Um, it's it's too porous. Uh, I think too much moisture evaporates out of the chip pile for the purpose of a the consistency of a chip pile. So maybe like next time I'll try it in the geo bin just because it has a little bit more protection, maybe less evaporation, and I can cover it. Because uh, on this one I'm gonna have to keep adding water, which is probably gonna be sort of a waste of water. Maybe in the future I'll experiment with um, with composting wood chips in a more enclosed bin and see if that uh, has any effect or makes a difference. So there's definitely a difference. Shot up to, it's up to 120 right now. Let's see where it settles. Uh, I think the uh, thermophilic bacteria are starting to colonize the pile, uh, probably from the remnants of my previous compost pile that I threw in there. And, uh, but you know, you know, you don't have to do that actually, even if you don't, um, if you don't have anything from a previous compost pile, uh, this will happen anyway. It'll happen naturally. It might take just a tiny bit longer, like an extra couple of days, but, um, and, and in fact, this is probably what happened here anyways. Um, there wasn't any thermophilic bacteria, uh, evenly mixed in but but they gradually are going to colonize the whole thing also you know these come from the soil they're in the environment there's nothing that you have to you know you have to worry about don't buy starter mixes don't buy anything like that that's absolutely not necessary okay looks like 125 on its way to 130 so i'm happy with that we'll keep checking it okay it's july 5th uh, it's been a few more days, and it seems like to have topped out at 130. I actually checked it, I think, uh, yesterday, and it was right around 130. Now it's like dipped right below. So I think it's time to turn the pile, uh, maybe get some more moisture in there. And uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go hunt for some more coffee grounds. At this point, I consider the experiment a failure for composting, hot composting wood chips on their own but a success in the sense that uh, uh, it seems that by adding nitrogen containing compounds you can get a uh, pile of wood chips to start hot composting. So please check out part two and uh, we'll continue with uh, trying to get this wood chip pile to compost.